What's up, tennis players? Look, let's not make this game any harder than it has to be. There's a really good chance that one or both of these two tennis myths are holding you back from improving your tennis forehand. So our first tennis myth is actually a misconception and relates to the general shape of the swing. Many people think that the shape of the swing should be around your body in the shape of a merry-go-round and actually pull from outside in. This just isn't the case. It's understandable, however. We watch pros on TV swinging so fast, going out wide, and then we see their follow-throughs and their recovery pulling back horizontal, and it certainly can give the impression that the swing should pull across your body. But I want you to remember two words, kinetics and kinematics. Kinetics are the forces being exerted to get the desired result. Kinematics are things that unintentionally happen as a result of those forces. So on the forehand, for example, kinetically, the pros are actually trying to swing inside out away from their body. But what we see is a kinematic recovery and looseness and relaxation, which is inevitably centripetal forces pulling the body open or then being loose and recovering back to the middle. So this, turns into this. Don't be fooled. It's important to remember that nothing that happens after contact has an influence on the ball. If pros are going down the line, they're trying to swing inside out away from their body to get the ball to go in that direction. If tennis pros are trying to hit cross court, they move their body a little bit more in front of the ball, but the swing up to contact is still going inside out to hit that direction. If a pro's running around their backhand and hitting it inside out, it's going inside out. If they're running around their back and hit it this way, outside in, it's still going inside out. One good drill you can do to get the idea of the correct swing shape is to go out to the courts and find a doubles alley. What you want to do is stand just outside of the doubles alley and turn with your backswing in the doubles alley. What you're going to try to do is drop the ball in the doubles alley Try to get the feeling of leaving your swing path in the doubles alley as long as you can, and then as a result, hopefully you should end up being able to hit the ball in the doubles alley. The other misconception we have from watching pros that can contribute to this idea that the swing path is horizontal or like a merry-go-round around your body intentionally is that the shoulders, simply opening up the shoulders creates power. That's how the kinetic chain works. It's actually slightly more complicated than that. Remember, it always works from the ground up. So for a right-hander on a forehand, for example, the foot pushes the knee, pushes the hip, the right hip, which will pull the right shoulder, but actually then all that kinetic energy needs to get translated into a linear stroke, which is going to go out to the target. So the irony of thinking your shoulder's pulling out is going to help you hit harder, actually by stopping the left shoulder, it's going to make the swing translate inside out even faster faster to hit a bigger ball. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that first myth. Before we get on to the second one, do me a favor. If you are liking the videos, hit that like button. It helps out me and the YouTube algorithm. Also subscribe to the channel so we can make sure we keep getting you more great information. The second tennis myth or misconception is even more understandable than the first. It's just such a minute period of time to be able to see it. And again, when you watch pros, all we can do is guess as to what actually happens. Still high speed photography. But basically, people think the ball is in contact with the strings much longer than it actually is. There's ideas perpetuated that you can come under and then roll over the ball during contact. You can't do that to have an effective topspin forehand. Some people think that you can come up to contact and then accelerate at contact, and then you're somehow going to get more topspin. Also not possible. The reality is, the ball's only in contact with your strings roughly four to six one thousandths of a second. That just isn't enough time to do anything. Now, the ball can move a little bit on your racket, but the angle of the racket face simply doesn't change during contact. And the problem with trying to do so is that you're recruiting smaller muscles, which end up slowing down the kinetic energy that's already been put into the swing. And it also hurts your hitting zone. Obviously, if you're trying to time a flip into the hit, you're going to have a much smaller area to make a good contact in. Now, this should be a very freeing concept knowing that there's nothing you can do at contact. I can even let go of my racket right before it hits the ball and still make a nice, decent topspin shot. Now, you got to be careful with progressions. You don't want to start your racket in the low and closed position. 
You always want to take your racket back high and then let it drop below the ball and hood it slightly to the ground. But for this drill, just start right there because this is the position a lot of people aren't getting into. Now knowing what you know, having your racket in this position allows you to simply lift your shoulder and it's going to position the racket face correct at contact. So start with your racket here, drop a ball and just lift your shoulder and don't try to do anything during contact. Just trust that those strings are going to be in the right position and make a nice top spin shot. So hopefully by identifying those two myths or misconceptions, it gives you a little better idea of what you need to be trying to do out there on the court. Um, please subscribe. If you really want some help, check the link in the description. I have a cool ground stroke certification. It's three easy steps to make sure you're in the brain trust. Get you playing tennis better, I guarantee it. Uh, thanks again for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.